Welcome back guys to <clears throat> unit two of biology 224. This section we're gonna be talking about the respiratory, endocrine, and digestive systems versus the first unit where we only talked about cardiovascular and lymphatics. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of different stuff this section and we're gonna start with the respiratory system, specifically the upper respiratory system. <clears throat> so just a quick reminder, we're not gonna go over every single term in this. So make sure you look at your other supplemental information and uh, just do your best to go over that stuff before you come into lab. Starting off, our first term is our external nares. So external nares are tested as openings, just basically corresponds to your nostrils. Kind of skipping down, <laughs> we're gonna go over internal nares real quick. Just like you have external nares over here, you kind of have a set of internal nares over here. So I think of that like as your reverse nostril or where uh, air and fluid is going to go down kind of more into your oral cavity. So external nares, internal nares. Next up is the nasal vestibule. The nasal vestibule is this space in here. I kind of say like if you were to pick your nose, this is where your finger would rest and that's how my students remember it. Next up we have the nasal cavity. It's this entire space. So all that stuff going on in there, that nasal cavity, gonna be that space. And then the nasal septum is that piece of cartilage that's going to separate the two sides of the nose. So I usually test it about right there. And then you can also do this kind of on a picture. Next up, we have our superior, middle, and inferior nasal conchi or turbinates, as well as our meatuses. So you can see there's three bumps right here labeled A, B, and C. A, the top one is superior <coughs> nasal conchi, middle nasal conchi, inferior nasal conchi. And then kind of like the same thing, we have meatuses. We have a <coughs> superior nasal meatus, a middle nasal meatus, and a inferior nasal meatus. Next, the sections of the pharynx. I test those as regions typically, and that's usually how most TAs do it. You guys can see how that looks in the PowerPoint. There's gonna be a section that says like, oh, this is the nasopharynx, this is the oropharynx, this is the laryngopharynx. Nasopharynx is kind of just this region up in here kind of the back of your throat, oropharynx, more right here, just behind the mouth, and then the laryngopharynx down here closer to the larynx. So you guys can see a picture of that, it's very useful. And then you have your entrance to your auditory tube. There's a little hole right here in the back of the nose that's gonna be the entrance to the auditory tube. So kind of a cool little fun fact, your ear and your uh, nose are kind of connected. This is why when people get ear infections, they typically have a lot of a uh, post-nasal drip and uh, like sinus congestion is because a lot of that uh, gunk from your ear is coming through the entrance to the auditory tube and is kind of messing up the back of your throat too. So that's why when you're sick with an ear infection, usually there's a lot of stuff going on in your throat and nose as well. <clears throat> Next up, we're going to talk more about the larynx and sound production. Starting off, we have the epiglottis, which is going to be this piece of tissue right here on top. So this is what uh, covers your trachea as you are swallowing food and what covers your um, esophagus as you are breathing. So you don't want um, a bunch of oxygen going down into your digestive system, that's what makes you gassy, and you don't want food going down into your trachea because then you're gonna choke. Next up we have the hyoid, that's that bone right here on top. We have thyroid cartilage, it's this really big piece of cartilage right here. This is what the uh, Adam's apple is. Uh, so guys uh, typically have pretty large chunks of thyroid cartilage and that's what gives us our Adam's apple. And then just underneath that you have cricoid cartilage. So that's this strip of blue just underneath that. Couple ligaments we want you guys to know is the median thyrohyoid ligament and the median cricothyroid ligament. So these I usually try to tell my students like just think about like where these structures are. We have the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone. So this gray sheath right here is gonna be the median thyrohyoid ligament because it goes from the thyroid to the hyoid. And then down here we have the median cricothyroid ligament because it goes from the cricoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage. So hopefully that helps you remember that. Next up, this one is really, really small. <clears throat> and one of the tips I usually tell my students is next to corniculate cartilage, write claw. So corniculate claw. When you look at this, 
There's two little pieces of cartilage right here. There's a bigger one that has the number four on it. That's gonna be your arytenoid cartilage. And then there's a tiny little piece up there that says number five. That's gonna be your corniculate cartilage. So I usually tell my students like this usually, this kind of looks like a bear paw and the claw, the piece at the very top is gonna be the corniculate cartilage. So corniculate claw for the bear. <clears throat> Next up, we're gonna go on the inside. So we've taken like this section of the larynx, we're gonna split it in half and we're gonna look on the inside. First up we have our vestibular folds. It's these pink folds up here. And just below that, just inferior to that, is gonna be our vocal folds. They have a little tiny white strip on it, and you can kind of see like this little white line running on it, so that's gonna be our vocal folds. Just above it, it's gonna be our vestibular folds. Last one is glottis. The way we typically test this is we'll just stick a pointer through the middle of this and say, name this opening. Kind of just like your windpipe. So that's usually how we indicate on practicals. We just stick a pointer through it and say, name that. Next up, we're gonna go over the lower respiratory system and then eventually the lungs. Starting off, we have our trachea. That's just this long cylindrical tube that oxygen carries down. We have our tracheal cartilage, all these little pieces of cartilage wrapping around the trachea are gonna be our tracheal cartilage. Down here, this separation where you see the two halves kind of split off, where it divides right here is gonna be called the carina. So right there where it divides is the carina. We have primary bronchi, which is that where we have that first split, where we have a secondary split <clears throat> is where we're gonna find our secondary bronchi. And then our tertiary bronchi are gonna be all these colored bits. So whenever your TA points to anything that has a color on it, that's gonna be our tertiary bronchi, just any of those colorful things. Next, those last three terms, you guys are gonna be able to see in your PowerPoint. For bronchioles, that's just roughly where the cartilage ends. So you'll kind of see a picture where they'll keep coming down way further past this. There'll be like little polka dots of cartilage all the way down. Once there is no more cartilage, the little blue stuff, you've now hit bronchioles. And then you have your alveoli sacs, the little, um, I guess they kind of look like, uh, I don't know, they kind of look like honeycombs to me. Um, and then just above those alveoli, where you kind of have like a neck, is gonna be our terminal bronchioles. So it's the very, very end of the bronchioles. Just before they hit the alveoli, those are gonna be your terminal bronchioles. Next up, we're gonna go over <coughs> the lung model. <coughs> Starting off, uh, we have a couple pleuras. You have your visceral pleura, that's this layer on top of the lung. So if your TA ever just like points to the lungs and says, name this layer, it's the visceral pleura. Kind of like we have the visceral pericardium for the heart. Parietal pleura is gonna be on the inside of the ribs, lines the ribs. And then that kind of space in there is gonna be your pleural cavity. Next up, <clears throat> we have the general lung anatomy, the apex and the base. Remember, an apex is anything that comes to a point, the base is anything that kind of comes to a widening. So I usually test these as regions. So name this region, it's gonna be the apex of the lungs because it comes to a point, and the base of the lungs on the bottom, which is that region. So don't get that confused. I know it's flipped on the heart, the apex is at the bottom and the base is at the top. The apex of the lungs is here, this region on top, base of lungs is on the bottom. In order to find the hyla, hyla is just like a group of vasculature. Take off one of these lobes and you can see all the vasculature on the inside. That's gonna be your hyla of lungs. You do need to write of lungs. That's super important because you do learn multiple hylas throughout your time in this course. Come on. And next up, we have a couple different lobes that we're going to test you guys on for the lungs. Starting off with the right lung, we have the superior lobe, the middle lobe, and the inferior lobe, which is kind of more on the back side. And you have two fissures for your right lung. You have the horizontal fissure separating the superior and middle lobes, and you have an uh, oblique fissure of your right lung. You do need to write oblique fissure of right lung because you do have an oblique fissure of your left lung. 
Coming over here to the left lung, we have a superior lobe and an inferior lobe. So you only have two lobes on the left, you have three on the right. So you do not have a middle lobe of left lung, that doesn't exist. <clears throat> For most people. We actually had a cadaver, I think, at one point that had three lobes, but that's weird. Don't worry about that. Next up, this little piece right here that kind of comes to a point on the superior lobe of your left lung is going to be your lingula. This section right here that kind of wraps around the heart is going to be called our cardiac notch. So students typically get really confused on all this. I usually just say like, if I'm pointing up here, it's going to be the superior lobe. If I point just down to the very, very bottom of that lobe, it's the lingula. And then if I do this kind of like tracing pattern and I say, name this structure on the lung, that's gonna be the cardiac notch. So again, only two lobes on the left, three on the right. You have, an, you have a horizontal fissure on the right lung, you do not have a horizontal fissure on your left lung. That's it for the respiratory system. The endocrine system is a lot more just you guys having to kind of know certain things and knowing where things are produced and secreted. So for example, the hypothalamus at the top, you're gonna learn that it produces and secretes those regulatory hormones like gonadotropin releasing hormone, gonadotropin inhibiting hormone. You don't need to know what all those are, although you will need to know it for lecture. And then it only produces antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin, so produces only. Then you get down to the pituitary gland where you have like the adenohypophysis and the neurohypophysis. Adenohypophysis produces and secretes all those hormones that you guys can see in that section. And then the neurohypophysis only secretes antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin. So that's really, really confusing for a lot of students. Some TAs will often ask things like, tell me what hormones the hypothalamus produces. So produces and does not secrete. That would only be ADH and oxytocin, not the regulatory hormones. Other times, and what you guys will often see on your quiz or practical, is you'll get questions like, tell me what this structure is, this is a pancreas, and then tell me the hormones that it produces and secretes. So that would be insulin and glucagon for the pancreas. And other things like the thyroid gland, you guys can see right here. So it's this gland kind of sitting on the trachea. <clears throat> often when we test students on that, we'll say name this structure and then the next question will be name two of the three hormones it produces and secretes, which is thyroxine, calcitonin, and triiodothyronine. So you guys will kind of just run through this in lecture really quick. Um, for the most part, besides that example with the hypothalamus, um, everything is produced and secreted with that gland. So in the adrenal glands, in the pancreas, parathyroid, all that stuff is going to be produced and secreted. So. Good luck on your guys' quiz and practicals this week. We only have these two sections for this practical. So next week, you guys will come in and talk about the digestive system and that will conclude the material for this second practical. So only two lectures versus three like the last one. So go over these videos, go over your other supplemental information, and we will see you in lab this week.